let's speak about this. I'm going to use the word new age, new era that, you know, we're stepping into right now as a collective. TLS calls it the age of love. Can you speak more about, you know, how you see this coming, when you see this coming? I know you mentioned certain deadlines of it needs to come by this date, no matter what. But based on how things have been progressing over the past few years and based on what you know with your experience right now with the organization and, you know, certain like insider information, if you want to call it that, how do you see us getting there? If you had to paint a picture of this new era, what would it look like? First of all, I would like to take this opportunity to request from your viewers to please read the document, the Pyramid Code, before sending in questions, because it will solve a lot of issues and we won't have to repeat items already written about and things we already spoke about, because that doesn't make sense. I would love to answer questions. I have no problem doing it, but let's get to a more intelligent line of questioning. So I would appreciate it if they do that. What was your question again? Can you repeat it in one line? In terms of the age of love, what this looks like, when you believe it's coming and so on and so forth. You asked what it's going to look like. Basically, no more religion. If there is a religion, it will be one religion called love. We will all be one. It will not be Jews, Gentiles, Muslims, whatever. We will be one. There will be no borders. You will not need a passport to travel. You will not need a visa to go to China. All those dictatorships and psychopaths and psychos that are running the world will disappear. And transparency will be everywhere. In business, in your cultural life, everything will be transparent. Everybody will know everything about everybody. Obviously, your privacy is your privacy for your own life, but transparency in the public domain will be 100%, not 90%, and not 99%, will be 100%. For me, these are the days of the Messiah. For me, these are the days of Nirvana. Call it whatever you want. And the wars will be abolished. There will be no more wars. That's it. I hope I covered all the points. There's one question I forgot to ask you completely. We didn't even acknowledge it. And it's about the codes in the document. When do you think that's going to come to fruition in terms of being shared? You obviously know these codes. You want to share them. The organization isn't letting you. When do you think that will be a reality? Well, let's clear something up regarding the codes. There is a book called Rays of Light that I'm not publishing, but I gave you some of it. Everything in there is written according to the codes. When you read it now, you will see a normal story, and that's it. The codes, if and when you will get them, you're going to see a totally different story, totally different message. It's all about the message, the awareness, and the teaching. The pyramid code, not the entire document, is coded. Only the part where you get into the pyramids. And if you pay attention, you will see that my language is changing a bit because I put it into a code. So what I'm explaining to you right now, for example, about the zodiac, the 144 stars, the 51 degree angles on the pyramid, and how the energies on the exterior wall on the pyramid is a different energy than the energy on the inside of the pyramid, and the explanation of how it's flying and all that. And so if and when you have the code, Again, it will be totally different information for you. You're going to see things in a totally different light. Why is the code not being released? That's not up to me. I'm saying if you want to release the document, release the code. That's why I was against the document. Why do you want to release something if you're not giving... It's like selling you a car without giving you the manual. Does that make sense? It's the same thing for me. But again, I don't make the rules. They do not want to give the code right now. What do you think the timeline will be in terms of actually receiving them publicly, collectively? I don't know. I really don't know. Five years, 10 years, 50 years? I can't. I can't even guess. I don't know. It depends on what's going to happen. What do you think the codes will do once shared? How will that change things? It will change your entire outlook about life. Everyone. Everybody. It doesn't make a difference the age. It doesn't make a difference the race. Everybody will change their outlook. I think everybody that read this document already had a change in outlook. No, but... But there are universal secrets. I'm not only talking about planet Earth, but universal secrets about... Creation. 
in procreation and how things are evolved and how things are evolving on a daily basis and how God is basically, if I can even say it like this, God is basically an ongoing process of evolution and God is basically experiencing its life through the entities that it created. Once you understand this, suddenly violence will suddenly disappear from our planet. It will disappear from your mind. That's what I'm telling you. If you ever have the pleasure of meeting an entity from outside this planet Earth, violence is not part of their lives. They don't understand what violence is. They cannot comprehend violence. And I, the pleasure of meeting not only entities, but entities and human beings here that are living a certain lifestyle, they don't get violent. They don't understand lying. It's not in their psyche. It's like, when I first met them, I said, this cannot be. I met somebody from India through TLS, somebody from Japan through TLS. One was young, the other was extremely old. You see, they don't get us. And they were born here, in this life here. In Japan, it's not that far. They have a totally different psyche, a totally different way of thinking. I want to share a story with you when those two individuals came for a mission and they were brought in into Manhattan could see the shock that they went through, and they didn't understand why people ever want to live in Manhattan. They couldn't get it. They couldn't understand it. Now, they were put in the best hotels, with the best protection, with vehicles to move them wherever they needed. They didn't have to do anything. Everything was taken care of for them. And for them, it was like coming to hell. Manhattan was hell for them. They came from a very small village somewhere in Japan, somewhere in India living their meditative lifestyle, living quietly, living peacefully, working on the betterment of humankind. They were needed in Manhattan for a reason or another. And I remember my first meeting. We had many meetings later on. In my first meeting, I was introduced, and we were supposed to do things with them and work with them. And I was saying, this cannot be real. It cannot be real. But yeah, it was real. They cannot comprehend that a person can lie to them. They're in shock how the world works here, like they came from a different planet. And these are human beings that are living on our planet. I hope we can get to a point where the whole world looks like that. It will. It's just a matter of time. Just, I like, I'm a very, I'm a very impatient man. I want everything right now. And I believe it can be done. But I need cooperation from others. I can't do it by myself. It can't be done. I know it can be done. But I don't make the rules. I'm just a soldier like you. Why don't we sum this up? We've been sitting here for a long time. <laughs> Let's sum this up. Is there anything before I sum this up and, you know, give a message to everybody over here that you want to share or end with? 